Hey guys, my name is Grant, and this video is the final video in a three-part series tackling the question, should Christians celebrate Christmas? As I introduced it in the first video, Jingle Bells or Jingle Hell? Now, if this is the first you're hearing of this question, I would suggest that you go watch the first two videos in which I cover in more detail what the actual concern is. Um, but suffice it to say that there are people both within Christianity and outside Christianity who claim that Christmas is not at its core a Christian holiday. Anti-Christmas Christians tend to believe that when we celebrate Christmas and participate in its various traditions, that we are unwittingly engaging in idol worship, while those anti-Christmas non-Christians tend to claim that Christians have no legitimate claim to the Christmas holiday, since, as they claim, Christians stole the date, as well as all the traditions from either Rome or Norse or Celtic traditions. In the first video in this series, we tackled whether or not the Bible actually has anything to say about Christmas directly. We came to the conclusion that, no, the Bible does not actually have anything to say about Christmas, and that these passages that are often used as proof texts against things like Christmas trees are really talking about idols that ancient people would worship as gods, not decorative trees. In the second video, we covered whether or not, as many claim, Christmas stole the date of December 25th by co-opting a pagan holiday such as the Roman celebration of the sun god called Sol Invictus or the Norse holiday Yule. And we again came to the conclusion that there's no reason to believe that Christmas co-opted any other holiday. And in fact, we know that at least Yule and potentially other holidays were moved to December 25th to coincide with Christmas, not the other way around. In this video, we are going to be discussing the common Christmas traditions like Christmas trees and Santa Claus and the claim that Christians actually, again, co-opted all of these traditions from other religions. And then finally, we're going to talk about why this matters. After all, it's just a holiday, right? Who cares? But before we go any further, we are going to be putting out a lot more content like this. So I would suggest if you find this beneficial, that you go ahead and subscribe, hit the notification bell so you never miss a message. All right, let's jump in. Christmas traditions. All right, we're talking trees, tinsel, Santa, the stuff that makes Christmas, Christmas. Where do these traditions come from? Are they actually pagan rituals? The first thing to remember about many of these kinds of traditions are they're kind of like memes in that they spring up in history and are repeated far and wide, but it's really hard to track them back to the first time they ever happened. But we need not be absolutely sure about the exact source, only that they are not pagan in nature. And let me say this again, when I started the study on this topic, I was completely ready to discover that Christmas trees were taken from some Celtic human sacrifice ritual, you know, or something, and and I was ready to make the case that despite their origins, that we could still participate in them and that their origins didn't matter. But it blew my mind when I got to the bottom of these things that I could not find any evidence that the common Christian traditions came from pagan practices. So let's jump in and start with the Christmas tree. Now, the Christmas tree sort of feels very pagan, if I'm honest. It's you're chopping down a pine tree, something that grows outside, and you're bringing it inside. And you can just kind of picture Vikings or Celts doing something like this. But this is not the case. There are no traditions comparable to this in any other religion. Now, there are some vague similarities with some religions or traditions where people would decorate trees outside, but none, as far as we can tell, use pine trees, and none, as far as we can tell, chop the trees down and bring them inside. There's no evidence that Christians picked this up or that it is in any way related to Christmas trees. As far back as we can trace it, it goes back to the mid-1500s in Eastern Europe, or Germany more specifically, where they would put on what they would call paradise plays, where on December 24th, they would cut down a tree and bring it inside and decorate it with fruit to symbolize the Garden of Eden, and they would put on a play around it. So the assumption is that eventually these trees became the overall symbol for the time of year. And it's also not that hard to imagine that the fruits that were placed on the tree on December 24th eventually became the presents that were under the tree on December 25th. Now, there's another rendering of the story in which Martin Luther, while walking through the woods, looks up and sees a million stars through the trees, and he's inspired. And so he chops down the tree and he puts lights on it to represent those stars to celebrate the coming of Christ. 
It could very well be a combination of the two since Martin Luther was in Germany in the 1500s. But it wasn't until 1800 that the, quote, good Queen Charlotte, a German-born British queen, brought the tradition to England and it began to spread across Western Europe and the Americas. In any case, there's no reason to believe that it was stolen from any other religion or cultural tradition. As far as anyone can tell, it's a completely Christian phenomenon, always holding Christian overtones. Or, let's try mistletoe. This, as far as we can tell, first appears among the servant class of England in the 1700s, so again, no pagan connections there. What about Yule logs? Many claim that this tradition has a connection to Yule, the Norse holiday that we discussed in the second video. And actually, it's a watered-down version of human sacrifice. There's again no evidence of this connection. This tradition seems to spring up spontaneously and most likely has a more practical explanation of being the formal lighting of a fire on a cold winter night. What about Santa Claus? Many claim that Santa is actually a representation of the god Odin from Norse or, or Viking mythology. Wrong again. We actually see nothing like the Santa Claus that we see today until we get into the Americas. After the Revolutionary War, Dutch Americans wanted to bring a connection to their heritage. St. Nicholas, or Sinterklaas, as they would shorten it to be, was a well-respected saint even among Protestants, and they celebrated him on December 6th. Now, Christmas was already going on during this time, and according to a video by Inspiring Philosophy that I would encourage you to check out, I'll put it in the comments below, in 1891, Sinterklaas Feast Day was merged with Christmas, which had by this point become a drunken brawl in order to make Christmas more family-friendly. Sinterklaas was known for his care for children, and so he would bring the presents for children on Christmas. And the plan worked. Christmas was rebranded, and Sinterklaas was Americanized into how we know him today, Santa Claus. And then many people have noted the history with Coca-Cola and how his looks change and everything like that. The point of all this being, while Christmas has taken on a lot of baggage over the years, nothing is pagan about it. This was as surprising and unexpected to me as it probably is to you. But finally, I guess the question is, why is this so important? I mean, shouldn't we as Christians just focus on the Bible and doing what it tells us to do? Well, of course, the most important thing is that we as Christians keep the main part of our focus on the scriptures and being disciples of Jesus in an ever-increasing fragmented world where Christians, like most individuals, are becoming more and more isolated. It's traditions like Christmas, which have been celebrated on December 25th for almost 1,600 years, that remind us that we are part of something bigger. I don't usually tell personal stories in these kinds of teachings, but I felt like this story illustrated my point well. The other night, my wife and I took our girls and we loaded them in the car and, and we started to drive around some different neighborhoods to look at lights. And I think, you know, putting lights on the outside of house is probably the least Christian-y Christmas tradition, right? Anybody can do it. It's just sort of a, a fun way to, you know, I guess, show off what you can do with your house. And so I wasn't really expecting to have any like religious, you know, inspiration or encounter or anything. But as I drove around, I was shocked to see how many people went through all the trouble to set up ornate nativity sets, reminding every passerby what this holiday has been about. And I was reminded that me and my family and our church, that we're not alone. People around the world are making efforts throughout this season to remind themselves and others of the miracle that came to this earth 2,000 years ago. Now, was Jesus actually born on December 25th? Almost certainly not. Was there an actual scene where all the wise men and shepherds gather by a trough in a stable where Jesus was laying? Again, no. But when we celebrate, we remind ourselves of the story that has brought us together as Christians into what Paul calls one body with many members. First Peter tells us, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Once you were not a people. What Peter is saying is that once all of us that are now Christians came from different cultures, backgrounds, spoke different languages, had different traditions, and celebrated different holidays, 
But because of God's mercy, we are now a people united in Christ. And it's not holidays or traditions that makes us a people, but they remind us that Christ has made us a people. So I hope this year you will celebrate Christmas along with me and my family and that we, as the body of Christ, can be a part of a great tradition reminding ourselves just how great the promise of Jesus truly is. I hope this series has been informative and like I said earlier, like, share, subscribe, and we will see you next time.